evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the squeaking door into my dread domicile of disaster. Come in. Come into my parlor of panic. Or would you rather sit out here on the terrace of terror? Hmm? Oh, a bit cool out here. All right, let's go indoors by all means. The house itself is always warm. You see, I had the painter give it two coats. <laughs> all of it built solely for your poignant pleasure and dolorous diversion. The price? Oh, so reasonable. Only a pint down and a pint a month for as long as you live. Pint of what? You know what? <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Eyes of My Murderer, was written by Emil Tepperman and stars Donald Buker in the role of Barry with Charlotte Holland as Carolyn. Now, let's get down to business. Hmm? Tonight, we hear the story of Carolyn Medford and the strange things that happened to her when she came to visit her aunt, Loretta Medford, on that grim evening of the 10th of June. But before we hear Carolyn's story, it will be necessary to consult a police report for the facts covering the three hours preceding Carolyn's arrival. I, Otto Frayne, lieutenant of detectives in charge of the Longview County Homicide Department, make this report of my own free will. It is well known that I have been collaborating with Loretta Medford, the writer, on a new radio series of half-hour shows based on my experiences as a homicide detective, which was to star Barry Adams in the featured role. Each evening at nine, after finishing my regular tour of police duty, it has been my custom to drive out to Loretta Medford's summer place on the North Shore, about five miles from town. There, we three, Loretta, Barry, and I would work on the series till well after midnight. Last night, the 10th of June, I left my office as usual promptly at 9. It was exactly 9.16 and one half by my dashboard clock when I turned in from the highway to the private road leading along the shorefront to Loretta's cottage. I was a bit puzzled when I got out of the car because neither Loretta nor Barry Adams were on the porch where they usually waited for me. At that instant, it was exactly 9.17. I recall checking the time on my wristwatch to make sure I wasn't too early. 9.17. It was at that precise moment that I heard the scream. It was coming from the direction of the private boat dock at the rear of the house. I ran across the lawn toward the dock with my gun in my hand. But when I reached the dock, there was nothing to be seen or heard. The darkness was thick, thick and black. And then, not ten feet away from me, I heard Loretta's voice. No, 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 please, no, 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 no. I couldn't see anything. And yet I knew someone was here. Someone who had just stabbed Loretta to death and cast her body off the dock. Someone who probably still had a bloody knife in his hand. Then I saw him. He was only a couple of feet away from me. Just a blur in the night. Too dark to see his face. But when he spoke, I knew him. That you, Otto? Barry. Barry Adams. What happened, Otto? For heaven's sake, tell me what happened. Huh. Suppose you tell me what happened. That was Loretta. Yes, I know it was Loretta. Well, why are we standing here? Why don't we look for her, try to help her? You know there's no use looking for her. Her body went over the side, and you know the current here is strong enough to carry her right out to sea. She was murdered right here in the dark. And I wasn't ten feet away. Were you that far away? What? What did you say? Why did you kill her, Barry? Don't be a fool, Otto. I was walking around on the other side of the house when I heard the scream. Why, I must have got here about the same time you did. Sorry, Barry, I can't buy that. Look here, Otto. You know I'm going to marry Carolyn, don't you? Yes, I know you're going to marry Carolyn. Well, then how can you imagine I'd kill her out? It's no use, Barry. You can't talk yourself out of it. You've got to be the killer. There's no one else here on the dock. What about you? What? You're on the dock. I... I just got here. So you say. The house is 
so quiet. Hadn't we better wake up Mrs. Finch? Later. We'll take a look in Loretta's library just to you make... You don't have to keep that gun stuck in my back. Go on. Open the door. I... I can't. What's the matter with you? I... I have a feeling we'll see Loretta in there. As always. With the dictating machine. With a cigarette between her lips. That's your conscience. I've seen lots of murderers. Their conscience usually gets them shortly after the crime. I didn't kill her. If Loretta were here, she'd tell us. But she isn't. She's out in the sea, wet and cold, no. with seaweed clinging to her, and your knife still in her throat. Stop it! Stop it! Well, will you open that door? All right. <gasps> well, what? what is it? Why did you close that door again? Loretta. She's in there. You're crazy. She's in there, I tell you. Her hair all matted from the sea. A bloody wound in her throat. Get out of the way. Don't! Don't open it! Trying to tell me you saw a ghost? Well, if you didn't kill her, her ghost won't hurt you. Well, where is she? She... She isn't here. <laughs> so you saw Loretta, hmm? I tell you, I saw her. With a wound in her throat. Say... How did you know she'd been stabbed in the throat? What do you mean? Just before you said she was floating in the sea with a knife in her throat. How did you know where she'd been stabbed? Oh, I... I didn't know. But you said it. Well, that was just third-degree stuff. I was trying to paint a picture for you to break you down. We do it every day with murderers. That's the way I saw her just now. Sure, my picture made it so vivid in your mind you thought you saw her. Proves you killed her. This is no illusion. She was right there, I tell you. Before the mirror. Yes. What was she doing? Standing or sitting? She... Or just floating? I... I don't know. All I saw was her face. Her tangled hair, her throat in one hand. She... She was pointing at something. You got it bad, Barry. Want to sign a confession? She was looking right at me. And pointing over there. To the dictating machine. Oh, the machine, huh? How do you make this thing work? Move the needle back to the start of the cylinder. Now press the playback switch. Right there. I don't hear anything. Press the button on the speaking tube. Oh. Well? Shh. Tonight, I am going to die. I am going to be murdered. I know because I've seen it in the eyes of my murderer. I even know the plan. The current that runs past the boat dock. The freak current that catches up any object thrown to it and carries it out to the sea. My body is to disappear. There will be no corpus delecti. Anyone else might be frightened. But I'm not. I know that I shall come back. I know that I shall be able to point to my murderer... And what's more important, protect Carolyn. Yes. Carolyn is next. That's the end. The end of the record. Good heavens, Arthur. She knew she was going to be murdered. And she knew the killer. She... She said she'd come back. Well, she's dead. But she did come back. She pointed at the dictating machine. And Carolyn's in danger, too. Good heavens. She's coming in on the midnight train. I've got to meet her. I'll have to leave now. You're not going anywhere, Barry. I'm arresting you for the murder of Loretta Medford. You can't do that, Otto. Who'll meet Carolyn? Don't worry about that. After I get you safely in a cell, I'll meet you, Carolyn, for you. You want to get me out of the way, in a cell, so you can meet Carolyn and kill her, too. You're the killer. Now, look, that kind of talk won't get you anywhere. I won't let you do it. I'm getting out of your seat now. I won't let you take time. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. <laughs> Loretta! What? I... I must have been mistaken. Imagine it. I let Barry get away. I'll never find him in the dark. That voice could have sworn. Good evening, Lieutenant Sane. And what is it that you could have sworn? I... Mrs. Finch. Please excuse the night clothes. I was rudely awakened in the midst of a troubled sleep. Mrs. Finch, did you? Did you just call out to me just now? Did you say, don't shoot 
Otto. I'd not be likely to say such a thing to you, Lieutenant Frayne. And was it Mr. Barry you were going to shoot, whom I just saw scooting out of here like a streak of lightning? I, I don't understand a thing like this. A thing like what? I just heard or, or thought I heard Loretta Medford say something to me. Oh, and not being Scotch like me, you don't understand how it was that a dead woman spoke to you. How did you know she was dead? You needn't become so excited. It was in my sleep I saw. You, you saw her in your sleep? Yes, and it troubled me so that I awoke. She came before me with her hair all dank and tangled and the salt water glistening on her face in the dark and her throat bleeding and raw. You, you saw her like that? Oh, yes. And she spoke to me. I don't believe you. I, I don't believe in such things. You don't, eh? Then who was it that spoke to you a moment ago and told you not to shoot? I... I don't know. Remember, I told you this was really Carolyn Medford's story. You've heard Lieutenant Otto Frayne's report of what happened before midnight. That was just the introduction. Now we come to the crux of the story. What happened after midnight, when that gadabout ghost really started to walk. And here's Caroline herself to tell it. It's not difficult to imagine a sense of shock with which I read Otto's report of the murder of Aunt Loretta. It was Otto who met me at the train instead of Barry. He, Barry, he didn't explain where Barry was. In, instead, he handed me the report which he had typed at the headquarters before coming to meet me. I read it in his car with the aid of a flashlight while he drove to Aunt Loretta's. When I finished reading, I just sat there with the papers in my lap. I felt something tight catching in my throat. I couldn't cry. If I had been able to cry, it might have been better. I'm sorry, Carolyn, about Barry. I don't believe it. How well do you know him? When did you first meet? Last time I visited here, in April, when school closed for Easter. Well, you were only here for a week. We've written regularly ever since. He proposed to me by mail. So you don't really know him very well. Well enough to marry him, Otto. A man could be that kind of killer, and you'd never guess it to look at him or talk to him, or even from the way he made love to you. Please, Otto. I'm sorry. You know how I feel about you, don't you? Yes, I know. If it weren't for Barry... If it weren't for Barry, I might have a chance. Hmm? Oh, Otto, please be kind to him. You love him so much? All right, Carolyn. I'll tear up that report. Oh, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't mean that, Otto. I mean, prove that he's innocent. Find the real killer. Otto, don't you see? It might have been somebody else, a madman, maybe an escaped lunatic. There's only one trouble with that theory, Carolyn. What? I was the only other person on the dock. The cottage was brilliant with light in every room when we arrived, as if to drive away evil spirits and ghosts. I was so tired and numb from the long train ride and from the shattering news I had heard that I stood with my eyes half closed while Otto rang the bell and Mrs. Finch opened the door. Come in, Miss Carolyn. Oh, come in, Lieutenant. Ah. My men all gone? Yes, they left a little while ago. Oh, Miss Carolyn, you look exhausted. <laughs> Come, I have your room ready. You'll be wanting to sleep. Uh, yes. If only you'll not be bothered by any apparition. Ah, uh, just a minute. Yes, Otto. Mrs. Finch, what makes you think she'll be bothered by an apparition? Didn't it come to me? Didn't Mr. Barry see it? Didn't it even make itself heard to you, a scoffer? Then it will surely come to Miss Carolyn. You believe that, Carolyn? I don't know, Otto. 
Loretta was so interested in the supernatural, the possibility of communicating with the dead. If you look in her library, you'll find she has almost every book ever written on the subject. That may be so, but do you believe in it? Loretta often told me if, if she died before I did, she'd manage to get in touch with me. <laughs> Mrs. Finch... Who could have hated Loretta enough to kill her? Don't bother your pretty head with that now. There'll be time for talk in the morning. No, I, I want to know now. Be better to sleep now. No, please, Mrs. Finch. You knew her. You knew her so well. You, you've been with her for 14 years. Yes, 14 years. Long enough to learn to hate her. What? What did you say? Don't look so startled. You too have cause to hate her, and so has Mr. Barry. What are you talking about? Her, with her 38 years weighing heavy on her and all those peroxides and creams and shampoos that she used. Do you know why? Because she wanted Mr. Barry for herself. Oh, no, I can't believe that. Burned her inside to think of Mr. Barry marrying you. She would gladly have died to stop it. And hasn't she done it? She goaded Mr. Barry into killing her, and now he'll be hunted and caught and executed. And wherever she is at this moment, if she can laugh, she's laughing. Oh, no, 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 Mrs. Finch. How long I lay there after Mrs. Finch had left, I don't know. I was cold, cold and shivering. My eyes were wide and sleepless as I lay taut in the bed, and my nerves were raw. So raw that the slightest sound grated. I sound at the window. My eyes flew toward it, and I glimpsed at the shapeless form out there in the night. And I saw the window slowly inching up. I must have leaped up by instinct like a terrified animal. And I was at the door, and it snatched it open. The corridor was still. There wasn't a sound. I dared not look back into my room at the window. I ran across the hall and pulled open the door of Mrs. Finch's room. <laughs> Mrs. Finch! Mrs. Finch! There was no answer. The room was empty. Mrs. Finch wasn't there. Blindly, I turned and ran to the stairs. How I got down them without falling, I'll never know. But at the foot of the stairs, I stopped. And everything within me seemed to congeal. For there, at my feet, lay the body of Mrs. Finch. And her eyes were wide and staring. And her mouth was set in a terrible grin. And her head rested at a crazy angle on her shoulder. For her throat was cut almost from ear to ear. Stop it! Caroline, stop it, I tell you, stop it! It's all right, Caroline, darling. It's all right, darling. It's I, Barry. There, there now. Take it easy, honey. That's right. I felt the glaze leaving my eyes and the rush of blood subsiding from my temples. And then I saw Barry. He was standing there, and in his hand was a knife. And blood was dripping from the blade. Oh, now, take it easy, Caroline. Barry, the knife you killed. Oh, I didn't kill Mrs. Finch. I just picked the knife up in the kitchen. The killer must have thrown it away. Oh. Who's that? It's Otto. He must have heard me scream. He was watching for you outside in his car. I've got to get away, Caroline. Why are you looking at me like that? You don't think I'd kill Mrs. Finch? Or Loretta? Oh, Stand still, Barry, or I'll shoot to kill. Now, don't move while I climb in through this window. Otto! All right, Perry. Drop the knife. Well, can you talk your way out of this one? Now, look here, Otto. They stood there arguing. And I didn't know what they were saying. I only felt a great and terrible weariness, as if I had had enough of living and would welcome death if only it meant sleep and rest. When I awoke, everything was still. I must have fainted. I realized with a shock where I was. I was in Loretta's bedroom. Her bedroom, which adjoined the library. I pushed myself off the bed and went over to the library door. I could hear Barry and Otto talking in the library. Their voices were heated. Numbly, my fingers found the catch and locked the door. Then I went to the other door leading to the corridor, and I turned the catch on that one, too. 
All I wanted was to be alone forever. Alone with the terrible throbbing in my temples and the emptiness that is inside of me. I had to believe Otto now. In spite of myself, I had to believe him. I had seen Barry with that knife in his hand. Those shots from the library. I sat up in the bed. Two men in the library. One of them had killed the other. Which? Otto had had the gun, but Barry might have tricked him somehow. Which? Which was dead? Which was alive? Someone was trying the library door. Oh, which one? Carolyn! Can you hear me, Carolyn? Are you awake? Barry! Open the door, Carolyn! I must talk to you! I won't answer. You'll think I'm asleep. Carolyn! Someone has killed Otto. He was shot through the window. Let me in, I tell you. I've got to protect you. I ought to let him in. Let him kill me. What's the use of living? Loretta said she would come to me. Maybe if Loretta comes, she'll take me back with her to the land of the dead. An excellent idea, Carolyn. Loretta, you did come back as you promised. As you see, Carolyn. But but why isn't your hair all matted and dank and the way the others saw you and, and the wound in your throat that the others saw? The others saw what I wanted them to see, Carolyn. I, I, I don't understand, Loretta. Do you mean that you're really not dead? Exactly, my dear. But you were murdered out on the dock. Barry and Otto heard it. They heard it. But they didn't see it. Was it a trick? Yes, dear, it was a trick. I was never on the dock. I was beneath it in a rowboat. Oh. Yes. And I screamed from the rowboat and made Barry and Otto each think that the other had murdered me. That gun you're holding, you, you just shot Otto with it? Yes, of course. So Barry is really innocent? Yes, dear. Oh, Loretta, you've done all of this because you really hate me. Yes, dear. I hate you so terribly that I'd be happy to die if I could destroy you with myself. It's on account of Barry, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I could have forgiven you everything. Your youth, your looks, everything but Barry. I could have had him if you hadn't come along. But now you shan't have him because I'm going to kill you. Loretta. Then when Barry's caught, he'll pay for you and for all the others. <laughs> I had to, Carolyn. She'd have killed you. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy. Darling, darling, don't cry. Oh, there'll be no more ghosts between us. Ever. There, now. All's well that ends in a clinch. Yeah, I... I really don't know what to say about this. It's so seldom anything on Inner Sanctum ends in a clinch. That's because it takes two to make a clinch, and we rarely have two characters left alive at the end of our story. Anyway, I suppose I could call tonight's tale a success story. You know, it's usually a story about a self-made man. Well, Loretta was a self-made ghost, wasn't she? <laughs> We invite you to join us again next week at this time for Inner Sanctum. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. (laughs) 